In a previous video, we recorded the excavation of a cemetery containing cremation pits at Balakolia County, Roscommon. These were located on the edge of a settlement site of several Bronze Age roundhouses, all of which were orientated roughly southeast. The site director was Paddy Walsh. The last time I was talking to you, we dug the cremation pits in Balakolia. And once we had the cremation pits finished, we then moved on to dig the roundhouses in Balakulla. We found at least four houses and these had associated structures and they dated, we think, to the middle to the late Bronze Age. The first task was to carefully clean back the site using hoes and trowels to reveal the features. During this process, a beautiful tanged arrowhead was found on the surface. The hoeing gradually revealed the outlines of slot trenches. The north of the site was structure one. It was clear that it had external slot trench and within the slot trenches there was collapsed stone. So we think this collapsed stone might have been the remains of a low wall or some people would say that the slot trenches were used for storage or for drip valleys. All the soil excavated from around the stones was sieved. A certain percentage was also collected as samples to be sent for specialist analysis. Within the slot trenches, there were deposits of cremated bone. There was a lot of bone right here. This, was the, this area here was the area with the strongest concentration of bone. The stones in the slot trenches were recorded and then carefully removed after excavating the soil. A metal detector was also occasionally employed during this process to test for any possible metal depositions that might require specialist attention. Within the slot trenches themselves there were other depositions which seemed to have been votive or ritual in nature. Structure 4 was unique also and there was a cornstone found within the slot trench and also a rubbing stone. The team also found a broken axe head which was found on the floor surface of Structure 3 and may have been associated with a post hole. So in Structure 1 on the northern slot there was the remains of stake holes at the edge of the slot. These were spaced evenly apart so it looked like there was some sort of weaving that was used at the edge of that slot in Structure 1 and also in Structure 3. So we think there might have been a low wall and then Outside of the low wall, there was this kind of wicker, wicker work that protected and then the roof came down to meet the low wall. The roundhouses also had central hearts and a great many internal stake holes. The hearts were all placed in the centre of the uh, structures, so they were just in situ burning. And what we found was when we excavated around the hearts that there was multiple stake holes around the heart. So that means that the stake holes held up some sort of cooking apparatus around the hearts. To the eastern and southeastern outskirts of the habitation site, along the edge of a dried up shoreline, two burnt mounds were excavated. One consisted of a very large spread of burnt stone and charcoal. Only about one third or less of this burnt mound was within the road corridor, the rest being located outside the CPO line. This portion was excavated but revealed no significant features. The other burnt spread was much smaller but early excavations of the layers uncovered a lovely worked flint tool. Later, two pits were also excavated there, and at the base of one were found well-preserved timber stakes, which would have formed part of a trough. Steve Lancaster, the project environmental specialist, visited the site to advise on sampling strategies. The wood pieces were carefully excavated, wrapped in film, and packed with extra moisture added to aid preservation, and thereafter were sent for specialist analysis. Back at the roundhouses, the team were excavating post holes. Within the structures, we saw that there was post holes. So this arrangement, they were evenly spaced apart, about a metre inside the slot trenches. The post holes contained packing stones. There was evidence of reuse of post holes 
as they sometimes were uncovered in clusters, which suggests that rotted posts had been replaced over time. Some of the post holes were keyhole shaped in that they had distinctive edges which would have facilitated the leverage and insertion of especially substantial posts. And we also had evidence that they charged the end of the post before they put them in because there was charcoal within the post holes, but not enough charcoal that it meant that the, they burnt down the house after they left, which can happen, that they burn the house down. And then you'd have a rich, very rich charcoal within the post hole. There was also evidence of ritual deposition within the post holes, cremated bone for example, all of which was collected for analysis. There was deposition of distinctive rounded hammer stones within several of the post holes. Ritual deposition for the purposes of good luck or charm is practiced from prehistory even to modern times. Some modern people, for example, will still place a coin in the foundations of a new house. The cremation pit inside structure 3 was a cremation pit similar to the ones we dug to the south of the site. It was uh, a bowl shape. It had two layers of cremated bone, an upper layer of cremated bone, and then under that cremated bone there was another layer of charcoal, and then under the charcoal there was another layer of cremated bone. So all of that is gone for analysis. Among the finds in the slot trenches were pieces of Bronze Age pottery. The pottery that was found on Balacola 3 was that of a more domestic nature, like they were very dark. So we think that they, the pottery that was uh, found within the slot trenches were more for cooking and domestic day-to-day -day activities. The pottery was painstakingly excavated. It was handled using gloves and carefully wrapped in foil to preserve it for lipid analysis. Modern specialist analysis of lipids may identify what had been the contents of the pottery. And also in structure three there was a long avenue porch. So this particular uh, house would have been of a higher status, we think, to the other uh, structures on the site. A threshold of stone or timber was suggested by the excavation of the feature. We think that these roundhouses were similar to the ones excavated in Caltra in Sligo. The interpretation for those sites that they were a low wall uh, sitting in these slot trenches and then the roof came down and past the slot trench and then there might have been drip valleys outside of the slot trenches. Dates have already been returned on some samples sent from Balakulia for analysis. Among samples dated were burnt bone, charcoal, charred nutshells from hazel and oak, and grass seeds which had been extracted from various samples. The dates obtained span hundreds of years, but all fall between approximately 1500 to 850 BC, which is the later Bronze Age. At Balakulia, we see in particular that the funerary spheres and the settlement spheres were very closely related. This site at Balakulia offered a previously unparalleled opportunity to investigate the later Bronze Age in this part of Ireland, the importance of which is increased by its location, being less than seven kilometres from the major archaeological complex of Rathcrohan.